to Emu. He arranged for road and rail transport to ferry the remaining aircraft back to Adelaide. The Department of Supply had only extended the deadline by a couple of weeks, and the fact that all five Mustangs were dismantled, loaded and transported within that time was a triumph of engineering and logistics. These remaining Mustangs were then shipped to America to be converted into twin-seat executive aircraft. Meanwhile, Tony had passed the engineering examination required by the Department of Aviation, and the way was now clear for him to make the final flight from Cuba PD to Adelaide. To escort Tony home, Jim Schofield arrived in Cuba PD, and at last, he was reunited with A681. Well, when I first saw it, I, uh, I must say it brought a warm feeling uh, to my heart to think that uh, uh, it had come back into uh, activity again as a serviceable aircraft. Um, and, uh, you know, I was very impressed with the fact that Tony had done that, even though he'd uh, bent the book a fair bit. It was particularly interesting to find that that was the one that Tony had flown out. The very first one had come to life again. Under the watchful eyes of Jim Schofield, Tony took A681 into the air once more. Mustang performed faultlessly, and the long flight passed without incident. The jubilant reception at Parafield was a fitting climax to months of incredible effort and endeavor. For Tony Schwert, it was the realization of a dream, the happy ending he had worked so hard to achieve. one it seemed that fortune had smiled at last but fate still had a few cards up her sleeve and she hadn't finished with a 68 one yet in fact the problems were just beginning by far the biggest problem was the long drawn-out struggle to get registration and a certificate of airworthiness so that a 68 one could once more be legally flown in Australia as the months dragged by, even Tony's optimism began to wane. This proceeded for, well, this situation, I should say, existed for quite a period of time. Uh, letters going backwards and forwards, um, and the indications were that it seemed it was going to be a very, very slight chance that we were able to ever be able to fly the P-51s in this country again. Because approval was given for the flight from Cuba PD to Adelaide, it was naturally assumed that registration would follow. However, frustration set in uh, as the months went by without success. Uh, but I must say that at tender time, it was made known that uh, the registration was not likely. However, because of that approved flight, it was believed registration would follow. By now, the struggle had been going on for almost two years, and the vital registration was as elusive as ever. For Tony, the question of finance was now becoming a considerable burden. Obviously, I was in a uh, no-income situation from my point of view, uh, plus the fact that um, I had to borrow a fairly substantial amount of money, as you can appreciate, uh, commuting between uh, Parafield and uh, an emu, um, spare parts, etc. Yes, I was fairly committed financially. After two years of mounting financial pressure, Tony Schwert was finally forced to make a bitter decision. The situation in Australia was at the time, both at uh, government level, uh, museum level, uh, and from a private enterprise point of view, nobody here was prepared to pay one dollar for the aircraft. 
So ultimately, um, uh, to clear myself of some uh, financial problems that I had at the time, the only thing to do was to sell it to the USA. Purchased by an American syndicate, A681 was prepared for yet one more journey, this time by sea. But an even greater irony was in store. Just four days after the sale was negotiated, the long-awaited registration arrived. I um, was not bitter, but I will say that I was uh, absolutely uh, disappointed uh, in the fact that the certificate of registration hadn't been uh, forthcoming earlier. Uh, the fact that it arrived four days after the sale was negotiated was an extreme disappointment. In the ship bearing A681 left Port Adelaide for its journey to New York. Although the Mustang was no longer their property, Tony and Charles Schwert had gone to great lengths to ensure that the aircraft had been packed and loaded correctly in order to survive the rigours of its long voyage. After everything they'd been through with A681, a decent send-off was the least they could give her. Yet, despite all their efforts, I now deeply regret to advise you that this entire affair has ended in financial disaster for the aircraft. The wings of this aircraft have been virtually destroyed. The flaps have been ripped, the wingtips have been damaged, the fuselage is damaged on its underside, the canopy is severely cracked. Package number three, containing the propellers, etc., was not discharged at Baltimore. In its present state, the aircraft is virtually worthless, except for possible scrap purposes. When uh, I'd heard that the aircraft had arrived in America and was damaged, um, once again, I just couldn't believe uh, we could have so much bad luck. I personally saw to the uh, shipment and even took photographs at ship's side. There's no way could I believe what was the content of the letter. Regardless of Tony and Charles' disbelief or Ed Jurist's bitter frustration, and despite the many letters that passed between Australia and America, the sad fact remained that A681, having survived so much, was now in a worse state than when Tony had first found her. The whole affair is a tragic disaster, and we can do nothing now but request recovery of insurance on a total loss basis. And so A681 was abandoned once more. This time, for over 10 years, and Tony Schwartz's dream seemed just as forgotten. But in the United States, it became apparent that someone else had taken up the challenge. That person was one of America's leading restorers of vintage aircraft, Darrell Scourge. Oh, I believe I first got it about, uh must have been in 70, 78 probably. Oh, it had been, you know, moved around from place to place, changed hands several times, and every time they moved it, they would lose a part, bang up a part. It was pretty sad shape, really. And when it was in Australia, evidently, uh, I don't know, you know, where it came from there, if it's quite a ways from the water, probably is. But it, uh, it was still crammed full of that red, fine dirt, dust that I guess is prevalent to that area. I didn't really know what airplane it was until I started taking it apart. And on the, uh, the rear bulkhead where the tail cone bolts on, uh, the, uh, there was a, uh, a serial number stamped on there, serial number one. So then I knew, uh, you know, which airplane it was. Well, when I finished it, it was probably the finest Mustang in the country. Sold, or the person I built it for sold it to another person. He sold it to somebody else, and they wrecked the airplane. And now it's, uh, I guess, in the process of being rebuilt again. I, I haven't seen the airplane since they crashed it.
a flying museum piece.